everyone, welcome to the Sew Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to talk you through my five favourite sewing machine feet. So all sewing machines come with a set of feet as standard. For your lower end machines that will be quite limited and then for your higher end machines it can actually be quite extensive what's included in the box. But whatever machine you've got there'll always be additional feet that you can buy and a lot of the ones that I'm going to talk about today some of them will come as standard with certain machines, some of them are available to purchase separately depending on which machine you have but I just want to bring to the forefront my little favourites that make my life easier, they make it um, more my success rates higher with certain sewing tasks and they make it quicker to complete sewing, certain sewing tasks and I use them time and time again so I just thought I'd share them with you guys because I really believe that these help me to get great results and it is possible you know to complete a lot of sewing tasks with a very limited number of feet and there's nothing wrong with that um, but if you are somebody who enjoys sewing gadgets and tools and things that do make your life easier and do make your success rates more consistent then I wanted to share these with you. Now all of the feet that I talk about today are available on our website and the link to our website's below. We are stockists of Husfana, Faf, Janome, Brother and Elna machines so we're a specialist dealer of all those machines and we also stock a huge range of accessories for them as well. On any of the accessories we do include a handy compatibility chart that will tell you whether that foot is compatible with your make and model of machine because that is very important to be aware of. We only recommend buying the branded feet for your particular make and model. Um, because you know if you buy unbranded versions sometimes they work but it's not really recommended it can cause problems so um, and it's also important to always check that compatibility chart to make sure because certain you might have a faff machine but certain feet might only be compatible with certain models of faff machines so it's just worth checking that out and we try to make life as easy as possible for you with those um, compatibility charts so the link to our website's below a load of information on machine feet is below you can get on there and have a look but for now I'm just going to talk you through my five favorites so the first one I want to talk to you about is the one that is pretty much on my machine all the time and that is my seam marker guide or my seam guide foot and these come in a range of different sort of uh, versions I suppose for all different makes and models but ultimately on the edge of the foot um, the, mine is a clear plastic one which is great because I can really see what I'm doing um, and it's got several markings on it one which is the edge of the foot which is the 5 8 seam allowance marking then there's a marking for half an inch 3 8 a quarter and an eighth of an inch and all you do is just line the edge of your fabric up with whichever seam allowance you want to create and sew away and it is that simple but it just allows you to get perfectly straight seams every time it's really useful when you're doing things like going round corners I find going round curves it really helps me to you can go quite off piece when you're trying to do that using the needle plate I find um, but with this foot I find that I get you know really spot on results every time it looks nice and neat the seam allowance is always even so I absolutely love this foot it was one of the first things I got when I first started sewing because I was struggling using the needle plate a bit and Angela my mother-in-law said to me well why don't you try one of these and literally like it is the most used foot in my collection I love it um, so if ever you struggle with those issues I highly recommend looking into one of those the next foot that I want to talk through is my walking foot so it, you may have heard of these as dual feed or walking feet now um, lots of people uh, are sort of big fans of these they are usually quite a decent sort of investment they can quite cost quite a lot of money usually anything between 20 to 50 pounds depending on your machine and what make and model you've got um, however they are so so useful and they are useful for a wide variety of tasks but 
The way they work is that they've got feed dogs on top of the foot and when the lever which you hook onto your needle bar, when that moves up and down, that makes the feed dogs on the top work with the feed dogs on your sewing machine. So the feed dogs on the feet work with the ones underneath on the sewing machine to feed the fabric through evenly. So. Um, this is great for a whole range of tasks so if you're working with a really slippery fabric like a crepe de chine or a silk for example it will prevent that the top layer and the bottom layers from running away from one another um, if you haven't got an overlocker or you just like to sew jersey or knits on your sewing machine it's fantastic for that as well because obviously with the stretch fabric you can run into that problem of the layers running away from each other again um, so it's really useful for patchwork and quilting a lot of people use it for because you've got multiple layers of fabric so you want to keep them together and you know stop the different layers from running away from one another you might be doing bag making where you're working with several layers of fabric or even a dressmaking project as well but if there's ever anything where you think that the fabric is going to be moving around and it's not going to stay put this is the foot that you need and they're a worthwhile investment and I use Use mine again I use it all the time it's just it's like a security blanket really that's what I would call this foot um, because it's there it, in those times when you think oh I'm not sure how this is going to pan out you put your walking foot on and that will make sure that that fabric behaves and does what it's told the next foot that I want to talk you to you about is my invisible zipper foot. So we get asked about this quite a lot because you can insert an invisible zip um, with a normal standard zipper foot. You can do that. But what's quite difficult when you do that is getting nice and close, close to the teeth of the zip which is an important part of getting a really good result with an invisible zip. Now an invisible zipper foot actually has little grooves that run underneath it and you slot those over the zip teeth. So what I would always recommend is that you press your zip teeth first away from the zip tape but then you put the invisible zipper foot on and you slot the zipper teeth into whichever channel you need to, depending on which side of the zip you're sewing. And it just helps you to get nice and close to the teeth. It keeps everything under control. It keeps the zip in the right place. Um, and it just really helps that one of those tasks that particularly for beginners can be quite stressful um, and can go awry quite easily. It just helps to keep everything under control. And again, the version that I've got is a clear one, um, which I really like because that gives me really clear visibility. So um, again, another worthwhile investment, I think, an invisible zipper foot. I never apply an invisible zip without using this. The next foot that I want to talk to you about is um, the quarter inch foot. Now, that's quite a sort of surprising one I suppose for some people for me to include in this roundup but it's because um, I find the quarter inch foot first of all it has got some markings on it like the seam guide foot that I talked about earlier but the one I've got has also got um, a lot of contact with the fabric so it's got a very small hole where the needle goes through um, but then the rest of the foot isn't very open it's got a lot of contact with the fabric and what I find with this foot is that if I'm sewing something that's really narrow like on this on the dress I'm wearing for example um, I had to sew, I had to fold over a quarter, about a quarter of an inch on the edge of the fabric, press that down and stitch it in place, or bias binding, those sorts of tasks. I find that this keeps things in place really well, whereas some of your standard sewing machine feet that have got a bit more of a gap in the foot um, and don't make as much contact with the fabric, I find that... Um, or, or say the fabric only comes sort of to halfway across the foot, um, the edge of the fabric, I find that it doesn't keep the fabric under control, whereas these qu my quarter inch foot, because it's got that extra contact with the fabric, it keeps things in place, it keeps things under control, and it means I can stitch those really sort of narrow 
um, pieces of fabric with great sort of accuracy and consistency so it's brilliant for that and I do say I do have to say I reach for this most in most projects I'll, I'll get it out for one job or another and then finally the last foot I wanted to talk to you about is a fairly new discovery but I will never look back from this one and it is a button sewing foot so I think a lot of people probably don't even realise these things exist but um, it's a foot that you attach to your machine and you actually sew the button onto your fabric with your machine. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with a bit of hand sewing, but the great thing about this foot is, on my particular model of machine, it will even um, make sure that you get the tension of the thread right, because buttons, that can be quite difficult to do. You know, sometimes you might sew them on too loosely, sometimes they might be a bit too tight and it's a struggle to get them done up. Um, so that's really helpful from that point of view. But also, let's face, it you know I love a bit of hand sewing I love hand sewing a hem or you know something along those lines but if you've got a lot of buttons to sew on a dress or a shirt it can become mind-numbingly boring very quickly um, and this just takes all of that out of that task and just makes it quick and fun and easy and it feels professional it feels like you're doing a really good job um, some of them come with like a little placement tool to place the button underneath and on my machine you actually select um, the size of button and the stitch that you want to use um, to sew the button on but you know they, they come for a wide range of different sewing machines and they're very easy to use but just make that task so much easier so it was a bit of a whirlwind tour but I hope you've enjoyed that I hope I've inspired you with some suggestions you might already know about all these feet you might love them you might hate them but this is just what I use all the time and I wanted to share it with you I'd also be interested to know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to sh us to share with you on this sort of topic or subject if you've got any questions we can do another Q&A um, so please pop it in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to know on this subject or, or any subject really but particularly interested to know what you'd like to know about sewing machine feet and accessories and I hope you've enjoyed it as I said at the start of the video the link to the website's below where you'll find all of our sewing machines all of our sewing machine accessories there's also a link to that blog post where I did the mammoth list of all the different types of sewing machine feet and what they're used for so you can get on and have a look at that bookmark it use it as a quick reference tool if you like and that is all from me today so I'll look forward to seeing you next time if you like what you see today please like and subscribe